30 seconds, he's got four Nathan's hot dogs and buns down. Do I have to go? Hot dog bun or can I do a bunch of hot dogs and a bunch of buns? Go to your happy place. Booker moving on to his second place. Go to your happy place. I have a lot of hobbies, okay? I like to say I'm a jack of all trades. I'm a master of none. Which leads me to wonder, what does it take to be extraordinary? You need strategy, you need stamina, and you need a focused mind. And you need no gag reflex. Go to your happy place. I believe if you have to be motivated to get up and do your job, you're in the wrong business. He makes it look easy. And most importantly, you have to have the flair, baby. So when you put all those things together, not only is it a form of art, it's an extraordinary ability. I'd like to think so, yeah. I rarely say this to people, Richard, but take my money. Uh, what's your favorite card? Name a card. Uh, Jack of Hearts. Jack of Hearts. Yes. So one eyed Jack. Okay. One eyed Jack. Okay. There's your card. Follow that one eyed Jack. Here we go. You just shuffle those cards. We'll get the deck some shuffles. And your job is to follow your card. Are you following your card? I mean, I'm doing my best. You, do you know where it is right now? No. It's in there somewhere. Okay. Here, cut off half the deck. Okay. 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 Say a random number. Uh, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What's that? Come on. See? Uh, Come was, on, you, see, Richard. You knew, you knew where it was, Johnny. Damn it. You apparently knew where it was. I had no idea where it was. But you called seven, didn't you? Regarded as the best in the world, Richard Turner is an expert card mechanic. An auto mechanic fixes a card. You know what a body mechanic is. Professional hitman. If you want to change your deck and you want to make sure you win, you go to a card mechanic. Everything that you do as a mechanic has to follow the natural flow of the game. So what happens is I'll deal cards to the other players. Only when I'm ready, I deal your jack of hearts. Okay. Watch face up. Yep. Tell the card sits there. Yep, yep. But you have to deal it as neatly as if you're dealing Smooth, from the top. Smooth, man. Please say you got that in slow motion. So basically what you're doing then is you're making it appear as if you're pulling all the cards off the top, when in actuality you're pulling the card from just below the top card. Exactly right. Now watch, here's one-handed. See when it's face down? Yeah. You can't tell you've been swindled. When you think of, you know, a card shark or a card mechanic, you think of the, the shady dude on Fifth Avenue who's trying to con you out of money. But do you feel like there is integrity to the craft? That's an interesting question because a card shark obviously is a cheater. There's not really a lot of integrity there because you're stealing the money. I chose to be an honest cheat. That's an oxymoron if I've ever heard one. I chose to use my skills as a form of entertainment. Welcome to the Magic Castle. Howdy. Where are we right now, Richard? We are at the Magic Castle in Hollywood. And it is to magic what the Grand Ole Opry is to country music. And it's only by invitation to get into the place. Would you also say this would be a place of secrets? The Magic Castle is full of secrets. So here's the lazy way of shuffling. Okay. Let's see if we can do this together. Yep. Put your cards in your left hand, kind of spread them across. To any novice who's ever handled a deck of cards, you know, they're awkward. I mean, they're square, there's a thick deck of them, they're slippery. See that? Oh! <laughs> that was a one hand drop, Johnny. <laughs> Even I can't see, but I can tell what you're doing there. And did I forget to mention, Richard is blind. I do everything by touch. And he's a six degree black belt in karate. You're legally blind. Well, how could you possibly fight? I don't know, find out. When Richard was just nine years old, he contracted a retinal degenerative disease. As his sight diminished, his sense of touch was enhanced and his drive to do the seemingly impossible quickly followed. To be able to manipulate a deck of cards as seamlessly and as quickly as he's able to do it is impressive, but what's even more impressive is how smooth he is with all of his actions. You're actually better at what you do because you can't see. I say I've, I've been very blessed and very fortunate, but a gift alone is not gonna get you there. You have to then put in the hours. I have spent 58 years practicing with the deck. 10 to 20 hours a day. I sustain that for seven days a week for 26 years straight. To do something for that long, for that many years, and not completely lose interest in it, I have trouble sitting through a Netflix documentary. Say a number. Uh, 13. 13, Lucky watch. number 13. Watch, I'm gonna try to cut with one hand 13 cards. 
Take them, count them out loud, face down on the table. Richard, like if this. there's 13 cards right here, I'm freaking out. You're freaking out. One. Okay, go start two, freaking. Three, three, four, five, five six, six, seven, seven eight, nine, nine ten. ten, eleven, twelve. I'll be damned. Let's try this. Two different numbers, five and ten. One, two, three, four, five. See if that's ten on that other step. Five, six, seven, eight, yeah, man. The guy's a smooth criminal. With the skill set that you have, this has got to attract some pretty like shady characters, right? Oh, I've had I've had mobsters all over the world proposition me. One guy, he says, "How much will it cost to buy it?" You know what I had thought of at that moment? What? The movie Godfather. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make, I'll make an offer you, you can't, can't refuse. refuse. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let anyone say or tell you something's impossible. What's that? <laughs> What's that? Take possible out of impossible. Make everything extraordinary. Go up about two inches and pinch it. And what I do is I go around two fingers, ties just like that. All right, look at that. We got ourselves a banana. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let my inner child fool you. Balloon sculpting is one extraordinary art form. It's eye-catching, sometimes surprising, and for balloon artist Jeremy Telford, tremendously award-winning. Thank you, thank you very, very much. In 2015, Jeremy Telford set the Guinness World Record for the largest balloon structure created by an individual. With a 65-foot balloon wiener dog. Okay. Spent 80 hours building the thing, used about 8,867 balloons. They made you count. How tall and wide was it? 12 feet tall and 32 feet wide. That's one big wiener. The first really large balloon I did was a 45 foot dinosaur here at Thanksgiving Point. Every single bone was within a half inch of accurate. What he is able to make out of balloons, in my opinion, is more impressive than somebody who can sculpt the dinosaur out of clay. Dinosaurs are among some of Jeremy's favorite subjects. So this is the Utah Raptor, huh? Yeah. And Utah's Museum of Ancient Life at Thanksgiving Point is where he displays some of his work and finds inspiration. In fact, um, I started building one last night. I was thinking maybe you and I, we could finish it up. Only if I can put it on and run around here and scare children with it. Can Sounds fair. Can you make that happen? <laughs> Let's do it. All right. So this build altogether is about a 10 hour build. Time is of the essence. <laughs> My plan of attack is to blow up, twist, and assemble as many balloons as I possibly can in the fastest amount of time. So when did you discover that you had this talent? My wife and I met each other at a juggling club in college. The what? Juggling club. The juggling club. And um, her brother had been doing this for a while, and he taught me as a a way to pay for my college degree. When we do the Raptor, we'll do that about 500 more times. Was that all? <laughs> I see a guy make a balloon animal, you know, on the pier at a children's birthday party, not very impressive. But what you've managed to do and what you're capable of doing, it's an extraordinary ability. Okay, so small bubble, take it across. There you go. Like that. Yeah. Ah. You are making a basket. Look, Ma, I made a basket. He's a natural. I'd show him something, he'd have it down pat, which is not something I expected. 70% of the raptor is gonna be this weave. Okay. Just making it different sizes. So this is a very important technique to use. Yep. It's crazy because right now, it's just a bunch of pieces that are separate and I'm having difficulty seeing how this is gonna become a dinosaur. Is that right? I honestly could not have done that better myself. Flat weave time? Flat weave time. There was a few times I got a little bit frustrated. There was a few times I got a bit distracted. Excuse me. Oh my God, my hand cramping. Ah! I always said I, I, I could be a rock climber if the rest of my body were as in shape as my wrists were. All the credit in the world to you balloon builders out there. Let's do this, Jeremy. And so, after hours of finger-numbing labor, it was finally time to show off my extraordinary ability. Striking fear into the hearts of unsuspecting children. Yeah! Help! 
And I thought dinosaurs were vicious. What the? Oh, humanity! I learned a few things today. One, balloon making is much more difficult than it looks. Two, dinosaurs were not killed by a meteorite. They were killed by small children. That was brutal. <laughs> My schedule can be extraordinarily unpredictable, so sometimes I gotta call for backup. Oh, hello, Mr. Bennett. Is your grandson, Jonathan, available by any chance? I need to ask him a question real quick. Hey, Johnny, what's up? Wait, Jonathan, that's you? Hair looks great, man. Jonathan, I need a favor, all right? Okay. You know how I'm the host of First Look now, right? Oh yeah, man, I know, I've seen it. Your, um, your biceps look great. Well, thanks, man. I saw you hosted an episode of uh, First Look a while back. I think you were in South Korea or something, right? <laughs> I am a Korean fisherman. Yeah, that was really awesome. We got to go hiking, and then we went and saw the caves. Yeah, Jonathan, something big popped up and uh, I'm just not gonna be able to make this shoot. I mean, listen, it's showbiz, you know how it is. Want some wine? I'd love some. So, are you asking me to like fill in or something? Exactly, Jonathan, and you'd be perfect. Okay, so what's the shoot? It's easy, man. You're gonna be working with some basketball team. Okay. You're not gonna have to get too involved, maybe do an interview or two. Yeah. Piece of cake. Have fun, and don't mess this up. Wait, mess up? What am I gonna mess up? Some basketball team? This isn't just some basketball team. This is the freaking Harlem Globetrotters. I'm ready to go. Are you ready to go? I'm ready. You're going, you're going to dunk for me, uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I can just walk up, boom, uh-huh. They break records. We actually have 22 Guinness Book of World Records. Blaze trails. Without the Globetrotters, the NBA would have never existed. And are even immortalized as cartoons. The first time I saw the Globetrotters, it was on Scooby-Doo, and I saw Curly Neal, and I didn't even know they were real people. Unreal is one way to describe what makes the Harlem Globetrotters world famous. But let's just say that is extraordinary. Everybody can't do it, only the special ones, only a few. My name is Ice because my defender can never stay in front of me. It's always like they're sliding around on ice. I'm an aerial assassin, if you will. Okay. They call me Moose, not because I look like one. I do eat like one, Okay. but I'm a large, powerful dunker. I enjoy playing basketball, yeah. and I'm also a comedian at heart. Known for his high-flying dunks and showmanship, 2020 marks Highlight's 19th season with what's considered one of history's most influential basketball teams. The Harlem Globetrotters started back in 1926, uh -huh. and they were first called the Savoy Big Five. A guy by the name of Abe Saperstein seen these guys playing and said, listen, I want to take you guys around the world, and we're going to play anybody that we play us. In 1945 and 1946, we beat the Minneapolis Lakers, known as the L.A. Lakers today. 1946 was also when the NBA was founded, and in 1950, Globetrotter Nat Clifton became the first black player to sign an NBA contract. So LeBron James, Steph Curry, even myself, Michael Jordan, we all owe it to the Harlem Globetrotters. Globetrotter 101, here we go, pull that finger right there. I can't believe I'm doing this. All You're right, doing... let's go play! Believe it. Oh. Oh. You dunk that ball, you should hear a lot of noise. They're all waiting on it, so you gotta give them a little extra funk. You see my bunk? face? Yeah, that bunk? Yeah, oh, then you gotta come yeah. down and give them some ooh, uh, ah, uh, ooh, uh, ah, uh, and I like to uh, uh, woo, and I bring it up right there. You see my eyes still? Yeah. It's intense. Highlight, I can do this in my sleep, bro. Yeah, let's see. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Whoa. Hit myself in the face. It was almost amazing. So, I'm gonna let you test this out. Okay. You have to try to take this ball from me. Yeah, no problem. Let's go, John. You think you can I take got it? it? I got it, here we go. Come on, come on, almost had it, come on. Let's come go, on. John, I thought it was gonna be easy. Ice can run circles around any guy on that court, hands down. Like, I was trying to get the basketball from her, and I was actually trying as hard as I could. I didn't even get close. I think I need some ice for my ankles now. We're missing one last component, and that's the weave, the most important part. Okay, pass to him, son of a gun. So when the weave is happening, all I'm thinking about is, oh no, who do I have to pass it to next? So you have to do the choreography where you're going around one, then behind the other one, and if I screw it up, they're gonna crash into each other, and I'm gonna ruin the end of the basketball game. I mean, no pressure. Is 
This is crazy. Hey, I'm about to play basketball with the Harlem Globetrotters. Moose, high. highlight, high rise, dragon, beast. I mean, what's my nickname gonna be? Apparently my name's Butterfinger. And it's my job to sink the winning dunk before halftime. It's like I can't even clap on the right beat. Go and now, ladies and gentlemen, direct from NBC's First Look, it's everyone's favorite Butterfingers, Jonathan Bennett. I run towards the basket, Highlight passes it to me, I jump and literally feel like an astronaut just being lifted into the air, defying gravity. It's the highest I've ever jumped in my life, and I dunk the ball to score that winning basket. It felt epic. What didn't feel so epic is when I got stuck hanging from the backboard. We never went over that part, so. Guys, don't leave me hanging! Come on! Help me down! Before today, if you asked me to name an extraordinary ability, eating would not be it. I used to actually competitively bodybuild. Now I train so I can shovel copious amounts of foods down my face. You know, everybody's good at something. For me, it was eating hot dogs with buns soaked in warm crystal light. I don't know. Anybody who knows anything about competitive eating knows this extraordinary feat of human consumption most famously goes down right here on the corner of Surf and Stillwell Avenues in Coney Island, Brooklyn. I've competed at the Nathan's Famous Fourth of July hot dog eating contest six years in a row, and I've won all six. That's our Super Bowl or World Series. That's what everybody looks forward to. And we're on ESPN. Long story short, I didn't put a hot dogs. Legend has it, Nathan's hot dog eating contest dates back to 1916. In those days, 20 hot dogs was the big deal. We started getting more return eaters. We started getting eaters from overseas. And we realized there needs to be a sort of governing body to advance the sport with integrity. And uh, so we, we launched the league in the late 90s. You can't have a sport without integrity. Exactly. Man. Yeah. Major League Eating holds about 70 events per year of varying cuisines. But to this day, if I want to make it into the big leagues. The Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Contest is where the sun rises and sets on our sport. And after breaking his own record in 2020 with 75 hot dogs consumed in 10 minutes, Joey Jaws Chestnut is still the top dog to beat in the sport. I would consider that an extraordinary ability. Yeah, I mean, I think they're as, as great as any other athlete. He's got 12 titles. It's unheard of. So he is the apex predator, the greatest eater of all time. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the greatest eater of all time to chow down against me, the greatest challenger of all time. But we are on hollow ground. So we're gonna eat some dogs. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the original Nathan's Famous on the corner of Surf and Stillwell Avenues. We have the legendary Eric Badlands Booker, Mickey Sudo, six time Nathan's Famous world champion, and the up and comer, the fastest rising star in Major League Eating, Nick Wary. 40. Yes, 40 hot dogs and buns, 10 minutes. 41 hot dogs in 10 minutes. It's 42 hot dogs and buns in 10 minutes. Yep. God, dude. Do you have certain techniques that you like in order to consume more hot dogs, hot dogs faster? I do cabbage runs, drink water by the ton, eat 21 sticks of bubble gum to exercise the jaw, cheek and jowl, rip meat off bone like a savage. <laughs> Damn! That's how you gotta do it. You know, there are no shortcuts to this. You just line up 10 minutes worth of hot dogs and go to town. Right before the competition starts, my hands are here, kind of waiting. Three, two, one, go. Peel these two out, put them in your hand, straight down. Five to 15 are gonna go down pretty easy without fluid. Five to 15. While you're chewing these and getting them down, pick up one of these buns, dunk it in the water, just kick that thing back. That's why we dunk it. It becomes a drink. You drink the bun. So it's two dogs, bun, bun. It's not about being comfortable. It's not a beauty competition. It's a paycheck. Well, there'll be no paycheck today. First prize for this contest, good old fashioned bragging rights. Five, four, three, two, one, dig it! And we are underway. Johnny's been watching his tapes. Eating hot dogs fast is way more difficult than I had ever expected. God damn it! 30 seconds, he's got four Nathan's hot dogs and buns down. Do I have to go? 
Hot dog bun or can I do a bunch of hot dogs and a bunch of buns? The first two hot dogs actually weren't so bad. And it wasn't necessarily the eating, it was like the chewing up and the swallowing part. Go to your happy place. Moving on to his second Go to your happy place. And then it was the wet bun in the cold water. Uh, it's not even necessarily the taste, it was like the texture. Two meats in hand for Nick Wary, the front runner. Ah! Nick Wary is gonna beat the time clock. He's got his last bun in hand. Mm. Your champion today, here at Nathan's Famous, Nicholas Wary. I survived. The one takeaway I have from today is I didn't die. 10 hot dogs in two minutes, Nick Wary. Nine hot dogs, nine and a half for Mickey. I'm afraid Johnny lost and you did a full three in two minutes. That's quite a pace, actually. Listen, I haven't taken down three wieners in three and a half minutes since college, Richard. I don't see myself competing in here in the near future. So I think with the proper training, I could be. Um, I just don't necessarily know if I want to be. How about a little love for our newcomer? Thank you. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. For more, subscribe to First Look and come with me on all my adventures around the world. Who am I kidding? I'm probably sitting at home watching Netflix or playing Xbox. Either way, what are you waiting for? Just hit subscribe already.